Greetings and salutations everyone, it's time for another episode of Viewport Relay, a bi-weekly podcast where the Viewport team looks at the latest news in the gaming industry. I'm your host, Albert Corston, and I'm joined as always by my co-hosts, Tristan Jung. Hello! And Alex Nestor. Hey! Alright guys, uh, it's been a while since we've had one of these. We've had PAX West and other events. I got I got married, have got married? kids. Oh, oh my god! Divorced. You... Oh. oh, it's been a long time. It's been I, I, it hasn't been that long, but that that's a tumultuous <laughs> turn of events for you, my friend. Um, but we are back with episode eleven, and guys, it's that time. What have you guys been playing? And we're extending this a little. We're gonna say the past month because the people want to know not really but i I think they want to know so uh we all partook in the battlefield 5 multiplayer beta uh and that was definitely a beta because uh there were some things that were definitely needing fixing but overall it was a pretty fun experience i think what about you guys I mean, they did promise us that some features may not work or may not work at all. Yes, that was a slogan of the front screen. Yeah. Um, I thought it was good. I liked it. You guys seem to have a worse opinion than I did because it didn't run as well on your guys' computers. Mm-hmm. But it uh, ran so As, as, as people with only i5s, we are suffering. Maybe, maybe it'll be better in the full release, though. Who knows? They probably haven't fully optimized it. Do they have recommended specs for this game? Yes, an i5, I believe, is the minimum spec. Is the minimum? Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. But the graphics card they recommend is like a 660 or something, really old. Hmm. It's a very CPU-intensive But, I mean, game. yeah, we, we were paying attention to our resources, and yeah, it takes up a lot of the CPU. So it makes sense why it runs pretty terribly for Tristan and I. I think I got to play like 20 minutes, because it crashed every other... Every other five minutes. <laughs> yeah, you were having some huge crashing issues when we were trying to play. I had to play in like some 400 by 600 window mode off to the corner <laughs> of my screen. If I like all tabbed, it just crashed right away. So Look. I uh, I had a really fun time. Solution is just play recon. You're like a sniper. All you yeah. need is that small little window. You just need a you just need a window big enough for your scope. Mm-hmm. So when you scope in, you can S- see him. So immersive. Yeah. But then, other than that, uh, we went to the Final Fantasy uh, Distant Worlds concert, and that was a lot of fun. I love the tracks that played during that, but uh, it, it kind of reinvigorated a sort of spirit in me. So I've been hitting up uh, the PC version of Final Fantasy XII, the Zodiac Age, uh, and yeah, I've just been having fun with that. Didn't you resub to fourteen as well? I <laughs> Maybe. I <laughs> <laughs> Look, sometimes you just gotta... Gotta get in that new content. New update yesterday. Gotta be a cat girl. Yeah. And what what better time to resub than a catch-up update where they release oh. the new tombstones? What about you, Tristan? What have you been up to? Um, I've been playing some of that game called uh, Dota 2. Oh, getting, oh, boy. boy. Getting my feet wet. Um, I've been enjoying it. I've been playing a lot of uh, support, which, you know... If you know which me, is rare for you, which is rare, very it, rare. Exactly. Um, but then I realized, you know, I'm here to just enjoy the video game uh, and not win. So I, I've just been playing support. You only win when it's 4v5. Yeah, that that's another story on its own. Um, mm-hmm. And then I've also played Shadow of the Tomb Raider recently for, for the review. Just uh, for the review, not for yourself? <laughs> it was definitely not for myself. Um, that was, uh, that was a video game. Check out the review on viewportgaming.com. Check a look. But other than that, I've been busy with real life stuff. So it's, it's been hard to get in some video gaming, uh, time. I, I guess I've been also playing, uh, Adventure Time Balloons on my phone. Oh my god, you've played mm. that so much. Um, but that's, uh, that's about it for me. I've been playing, I've been playing all the video games, man. Playing Battlefield 5. I, I beat Celeste in like two sittings in the span of one day. Um, I'm playing Rimworld now and that's eating my life. And then, uh, 
What else did I play? I played another game on Switch for a little bit. Bad North. I played some of that. I don't think any of us played Spider-Man. I don't think any of us picked that up. I think nope. it's... My roommate played that. He beat it in the span of like a week. And I, when I mean beat, I mean he 100%ed it in like a week. I saw him fight Venom. How did that go? Uh, not, not, uh, I don't know. Don't know where to okay. take it. Okay, well... He's None not of us game. played Spider-Man, but you know what? That's okay. So let's g- this 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 past month, you know, not a bad month to take off. Not a lot <coughs> happened in the gaming world, right? I don't know. We had some big headlines, of course, but you know, it's not like it was E3. You know, Kingdom Hearts nice. three delayed. Okay, you know what? Cover art was revealed today. Trailers came out. It is the opposite of delayed. There is more news than ever. That was um, a... Okay, quick sidetrack. Do you like that cover art? I think it's kind of messy. But you know what? I'm fine with it. It's 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 launching hype trains out of its cover. Um, but we're going to get started with probably some of the biggest amount of news drop that came out. Um, and that was, we had a Nintendo Direct last, what, Thursday? It was supposed to be two weeks ago. It came out last week because there was, uh, some, some more trouble in Japan. You know, they got hurricane, or not hurricanes, typhoons. They got earthquakes. They had, like, heat waves in the summer. You know, it's, it's not good over there, but, uh, we had a Nintendo Direct last week. We got a lot of news, and we're gonna do a quick, a quick game. Not really a game. Just an opinion thing. Um, and it's called, it's, we're not doing packing or lacking this time. We've switched it to, uh, cruising or snoozing, right? Mm, okay. So something that's cruising, obviously, will be something that's cool or something you're looking forward to. And something that's snoozing is something that's, I don't know, mediocre, boring, whatever, go on to the next thing. So we're going to kind of do this a little bit in order of how the direct announced them, uh, well, I'll just go through each line, and you guys can say if it's cruising or snoozing, and then if you want to talk anything else about it, go on ahead. But we'll start out with the first one, which is Luigi's Mansion 3. Snoozing. Tristan. Snoozing. Oh, why is it snoozing? I've never played the first two. That That's about it. That's about it, Alex? That's Have you played it. any of them? I am also Susan for the same exact reason. It just never, <laughs> the first game never appealed to me and I don't even remember the second game. I was more of a Mario boy. You know, I played Mario oh, Sunshine. Okay. I didn't play Luigi's Mansion. You were that guy. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Team Mario. Yeah. All right. And, and no interest though in this? You've never played it, but you're not like, maybe I'll pick this one up. <laughs> <laughs> I take that as a no. I yeah. take that as. You let, you guys literally fell asleep snoozing right there. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, we got the next one. Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn for 3DS. We got a remake here. Is there an in-between, or is it just, like, an absolute choice you have to make? Uh, we can make one up on the spot right now. What's the... What's split the difference between cruising and snoozing? No. You know what? No, I'm saying no. You gotta choose. It's okay. either cruising or snoozing. Okay, then it's snoozing. All right. Um, I played the original. I hated the original. And then I saw all the, all the cool extra features that they're adding with Meta Knight. Um, there's actually lives now, supposedly, or at least a health bar. Um, and there's like a nightmare mode, right? A nightmare mode? Oh my God. Yeah, it's gotta be so night- difficult. Um, but all in all, I, I don't think the original game was too great to start off with. So I'm not, I, I don't have any high hopes. So snoozing. Snoozing, Alex. Snooze. I don't think you've ever played the original, so... <laughs> Snoozing? Well, I mean, not only that, I... It's a 3DS game in the current year. Oh, that's actually a really big thing to well, bring up. Who still plays a 3DS when you got the ultimate console of that's handheldness? True. Oh, I thought you were going to say the Xbox One X. The world's <laughs> most powerful console. Well, it's not yet handheld. Wink, wink, Phil Spencer, yeah, drop us Phil Spencer needs to give us... Give us an engineer who will drop us all the details of how they made the most powerful console handheld. Exactly. 
All right, let's keep moving on. We've got New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. That was a mouthful of a title to say. We'll start with Alex. Snoozin' or cruising? I mean, I kind of get it, but why does this still have you in the title? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, they were like, hey guys, the Wii U existed, remember? Uh huh. It had good uh, games, but you guys never bought it. Anyways, I'm snoozing on this one. I I like that 3D Land one that they came out with. That one was a bit more fun. I, oh, that I, one's good, yeah. I just can't get behind the new Super Mario Bros. games. They just weren't as fun to me. What's your opinion on 2D Mario? The new is that is that kind of I guess that's kind of the new Super Mario's like their 2D version. Yeah, that, that that's essentially what it is to me at least. Yeah, I don't, I don't like them either. Tristan, you snoozing or cruising? I'm a cruising. Oh, I like oh. new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe a Hyper Edition. Um, <laughs> it has it has Ultimate both games Suplex. in it. Does that does that sell this a little more? It has both of them in it. it has the Mario and the Luigi one? Well, Two I lied. I actually one. didn't play the Wii U one. I only played the the Wii well, one. Well, now you got a chance, buddy. Yeah, I know. I'm and pretty excited. You can replay the Wii. This is how I uh, rekindled my sibling relationship with my sister um, by playing New Super Mario Brothers and lost a couple friends. So I'm excited to go through that cycle you can again. Lose friends over this game? Oh my uh, goodness! Yeah, that's why I don't want to play Mario Party ever. Is this like in the in 3D world for the Wii U where you could like throw your friends off the map? Is this yeah. like this? Yeah. Oh, it's exactly okay. the same. Oh um, boy, is there a crown if you win? I don't remember that much. Oh, they should add that back. But in. But I, I have a question. Yes. Who is Peachette? And oh, what, that's what just... is Peachette? This is breaking lore. Okay, no one cares about the game. There's new Mario lore with Peachette. I don't know. Is she looks Peach the exact actually, same. Is Peach a toad? Is she a toadstool? <laughs> or is this a whole new incarnation of Peach? Wait, well, isn't she, her name Princess Toadstool? Yeah, she's Princess Toadstool. So I mean, it it only fits. But why do none of them look like a person except her? I mean, we're not Nintendo. I can't. I can't answer this question for you. We can theory craft right here. We're turning into a fanfic podcast. Yeah, sex for sells, Peach right? Maybe Mario. Oh always was in love with a toad but how he maybe. sees princess peach is in the human form maybe mm-hmm. he's also a toad <laughs> maybe everyone's a toad yeah, maybe, maybe Mar- everyone's a mushroom M- mario a debt <laughs> yeah ever wonder why, why it's the mushroom kingdom is mm. bowser a, a mushroom mm, that's a good question i don't and know we'll have to find out but what, let's move on we, what we're, is we're, a goomba what they're a mushroom. That, but are they? That, I'm just gonna let this go. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's let's keep moving on. We got it, we got it, we got a lot more. We got Katamari Damasi re-roll. Um, la, 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 la. La 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 la. All right. So just some additional deets. This is coming. This is going to be a thirty dollar game. So it's not a full priced uh, remaster or whatever you want to call it. Alex, cruising or snoozing? I'm cruising. This game's fun. Simple as that. Would you You're... play it with motion controls? I I would definitely play it with tilt controls. Where's my emote? I'm using tilt controls. Mm-hmm. Tristan, plus one on snoozing? exactly what Alex said. Cruising. Tilt controls only, no items, final destination. Let's go. Put the music at max volume. All right, next one. This one's going to be... And speaking of which, it's very important today, but we got Switch Online, and that has released today. So you got to pay to play most online games. Some of them are still free. Fortnite's still free. You can play that without the subscription. Oh, then I, why, why do I even need to buy this? Oh, okay. No. No, we're not, we're not, save that for like 20 minutes, okay? Um, I don't know. Can you even be cruising on Switch Online? You have to pay and you get games. I'm pretty snoozing. Whatever they had before was not that great. And like, this paid version basically does not improve anything. Um, I'll probably unhappily fork over $20 a year, but, uh, it's, it's, Basically the worst online service ever. If you know your friends, you can family plan up, by the way. You can get seven accounts for 35 I think it is. 
What um, if I truly don't know my friends? What if I truly don't well, have any friends? They're truly your friends if you took the time to input their 16-digit friend code into your Switch. Uh, Alex, what? I don't know. Do you want to? Do you have input on this? I am snoozing at the moment. It just doesn't offer much to you compared to what they were giving you before. Other than, I guess, uh, some classic NES games that you can play Alex, with random sp- people. Special deals to be announced. Yep. And then cloud saves for most of the games anyways. <laughs> for, I like how uh, their reasoning was they don't do it because of cheating or whatever, but I was yeah, like, okay. It doesn't make sense. But anyways, yeah, I I don't know. I'm snoozing for now until they show what they really want to do with the uh, service. All right. And a little addendum to Switch Online. We've got that new NES controller just for playing those NES games. Uh... Snoozing or cruising? I don't know. Super snoozing. Pretty... Why Super do you have to snoozing? buy Switch Online to be able to buy these things? Wait, you can buy these things without Switch Online. You just can't use them. They they will come in packs of two and will cost $60 and will apparently only be available to people with paid Nintendo Online accounts. How do they check that? Like, are if they... you go to Walmart and you buy it, are they going to be like, are Give these, only, Nintendo are these only going to be offered on a Nintendo store or something? Maybe. That seems weird. Unless I can play Smash Ultimate using this NES controller, I'm snoozing. Alrighty. Who, who cares that it doesn't have enough buttons? Yeah, Agreed. you can only buy them from the online store. There you go. Hmm. Control I've the never supply. Seen, I've never seen a company do like a restricted thing unless you're membership with us. Maybe it's like, maybe they're gonna be like Costco soon. I mean, mm-hmm. why would you buy them if you don't have the membership though? I don't. They look nice. Yeah, collector's item. I guess. Okay, next one. We've got um, what is it? Unannounced title town or title pending town? The working new title, RPG even. working title by Game Freak. Snoozing. They look kind of lame. I'm. <laughs> Sorry to be <laughs> to be so blunt. <laughs> I mean that that is we didn't see much, so I can I can see yeah, that opinion. Snoozing at the moment, I'm kind of concerned. This looks like a really cheap uh, 3D Unity title, but uh, yeah, that's all I can say about it. There was nothing else shown. How about this next one, Demon X Machina? <laughs> you guys are like, what is that game? I'm like, I, I remember down. it from E3. Yeah, it was E3, and then they showed about two minutes more of this one. The weird part I thought of this one is when they were like, you can jump out of your mech and run around. And I was like, why would, why, the whole point of this game is you're in a mech suit. Why would you run around like a bozo outside? It, it gave me some like Star Fox uh, Assault PTSD mm-hmm. when, when that showed up. Um, I, I think I'm, you know, fairly cruising on it though it seemed interesting it's kind of like zone of the enders there was some like cool customization features that they showed this time around like you can pick up guns and weapons from dead quote-unquote dead mechs um and there's online co-op so i'm pretty excited take take down bosses together yeah Mm -hmm. i'm cruising i i like mech games uh the getting out of your mech thing kind of reminds me of uh this really old like xbox title i think it was like mech assault lone wolf or renegade or something edgy like that where you could just steal people's mechs and it was really cool there was an online mode where you could do like a team deathmatch kind of deal you could hijack enemy mechs and all this crazy stuff so yeah i'm excited to see more of this game and what what they'll do with it Alrighty, we've got. I'm. Just, I just lumped all these ones into one. We got like every single Final Fantasy except eight. Except coming. eight. Except eight and um, six. And, well, none of the two D ones were announced, so stay tuned for that, I guess. Uh, but I don't know. How about thirteen? I don't know if thirteen could run on a Switch. How about? Tw- tw- oh wait, twelve is coming. Twelve is coming. yes. Twelve is coming. How about fourteen? 14 on the Switch would be so good. Oh my god. Are you sure about that? I think it'd be pretty cool. Where's your keyboard? Well, I mean, it's already on the PS4. Yeah, it's on the PS4. Yeah. But who plays on the PS4? Other than a lot of people. It came out. Did it come out first on PS4? I forget. No, it came out first on PS3. 
first on the end gauge. Mm-hmm. What What are your guys's? What are the best ones coming here for this? Uh, definitely Zodiac Age is my favorite, obviously. But uh, ten and ten two are much loved. Well, ten two is kind of divisive on terms of its story, but people love the gameplay of it. Uh, it's pretty surprising to see 7 and 9 on a non-Sony console, and I guess not on PC either, so... Seeing them on Nintendo, it's a whole new era. What about Chocobo Dungeon, everybody? Mm, that one was a bit of a snoozer. I <laughs> I was like, what is... Is this like Pokemon Mystery Dungeon? I yeah, ba- like, basically this? it is, yeah. How, how about okay. Crystal Chronicles? I, I've i heard people love it. I never picked it up for GameCube. It was before I really liked JPR, JRPGs at all, so... I didn't know there was a time in your life that that existed, Alex. <laughs> I believe thought you were just not. born <laughs> believe with, it like, or a not, Tales of Games in your hand. I didn't start playing JRPGs until high school. His his formative ages. Mm-hmm. Where I was easily peer pressured and influenced by other things. Outside influences. All right, and this last one I'm going to lump together. We've got um, Isabelle from Animal Crossing for Smash, as well as the announcement of a new Animal Crossing for next year. Snowzen? Shrug? Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. I mean, I really did not like New Leaf. I'm sorry. Um, And they didn't show anything about the game. Okay, hot take. Why do people even like Animal Crossing that much? It's like a it's like a, it's mobile like a game. It's like a worse it's a time- Sims. Eh, it's different than Sims. You don't really build a town as Sims. Alex, I sleep. <laughs> I am cruising. Then okay, I'm not the biggest fan of Animal Crossing, but I'm hyped. I'm happy that. The Animal Crossing fans of the world finally have a new title to look forward to. And you know what? The Smash announcement was pretty cool because it wasn't an Echo Fighter and she's like unique and she's cute and she has a crazy fishing rod attack, which I don't know what the heck that's going to do, but more hype on the Smash train. And she's cute. I will. I'll write that one down. And she's cute. It's she's a dog. She's a cute dog. All right. I know what kind of forums you go to. <laughs> See you at FurryCon. All right. So that wraps it up for Nintendo Direct. Let's move on to something that Tristan has probably been missing for a whole month. A it's Battle Royale segment. Royale. <laughs> Royale. Oh, baby. All right, so I'm going to start off with this news, and it's not like a hate on something, but it'll roll into the rest of the conversation. Um, so we had PUBG on Steam falling below a million players for the first time in a year. And that's pretty significant, supposing that this game peaked at like one point. I don't have the exact numbers on it. Something Three like million. One. Is that really the number? It's on the chart. Three million. All right, three million users, and now it's it. I mean, obviously, you can't really use a, a a dip as the best indication because time zones and people go to sleep and yada yada. But below a million concurrent, um, and the main reason I want to bring this up is because obviously over the past two weeks we've had Call of Duty Blackout Black Ops 4's Blackout mode. A lot of that gameplay has been kind of shown off and revealed as well as battlefield five sort of teasing its firestorm game mode as well as of course fortnite's continued reign on the battle royale market so um with all these games coming out do you guys see PUBG potentially going free to play in the future uh due to what i've seen with the black ops 4 uh i guess beta right now beta or demo is that uh i think they will definitely have to consider going to free to play because uh blackout mode seems pretty well made overall even in its beta state and it i think it'll pretty easily challenge PUBG if it stays as a paid game but isn't blackout gonna be 60 dollars it will you'll have to own the main game but i don't know how that will factor into people 
Uh, whether PUBG they'll... costs what forty? PUBG costs forty, I think. Thirty. Thirty, I think, at the moment. Na, 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 na. It's thirty, yeah. So yeah, I I think people will make a pretty conscious decision. Not only do they get the battle royale blackout mode, they would get the rest of uh, the Call of Duty experience trademark. Exactly. Justin, what do you think? I mean, to be honest, I think the only reason why PUBG had so many players was like it was the only one that was doing battle royale. Um, and to be fair, it wasn't that great. It's like super slow. UI sucks. Okay, UI is not too great. Uh, it doesn't run that well. And then, like, Fortnite came out. It's, like, super fast-paced. Uh, it actually runs properly. And then, I guess Call of Duty is kind of striking that middle ground between being cartoonish and, like, super realistic. And like Alex was saying, the beta footage looks so good. I don't know. I'm pretty excited. Um, so, I don't know if you guys heard, but they actually extended the beta by half a day or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they actually increased the player counts to 100 instead of 88. Oh. Yeah, I think they have been slowly ramping up the total number of players that could be in one match. They were kind of like benchmarking the servers or something. Or just so, being having some fun. I don't know. So, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I think PUBG is going to have to do something. Like, if you look at that graph, it's a, it's a very gradual decline. Um, so, I, I'd be kind of worried. Uh, I don't know if they're going to go free to play, though. Just because Call of Duty is going to be 60 bucks and Battlefield is going to be 60 bucks. So, we haven't seen much of Battlefield 5's Firestorm mode yet. But what other pressures do you see coming from the AAA publishers and their entrance into the Battle Royale scene? So, we kind of talked about PUBG. But what do you see in terms of games like Realm Royale, games like Fortnite, games like... What else do we have? H1Z1? Uh, Dying Light. See- Bad Blood or whatever it's called. Yeah, there's also that one too. That's that you would call that like a triple A one, right? Uh I Do guess. we consider Fortnite a triple A battle royale title? I mean at it's this me- point it yeah, basically I think it is. has to be. But I mean Epic Games beforehand was pretty big still. Mm-hmm. They had Unreal. They are Unreal. Mm-hmm. Still are. So obviously, like, I don't see um Fortnite changing much. I feel that, oh, obviously they're free to play, so what else can they do to monetize their game? But at the same time, I think that uh, some people might get bored of the gameplay of Fortnite. I've seen a lot of criticisms now where um, it doesn't, there's there's some complaints about a lack of a, quote, uh, competitive mode. And by that, a lot of players don't like the building aspect anymore. It was a cool thing at first to separate apart. But I read a comment yesterday that was, I don't want every fight to turn into a guy building the Great Wall of China in five seconds. And how some people just want to, I don't know, have like a shooter game and not have to like focus so much on the building aspect. So obviously, I think Fortnite's the biggest battle royale out there because it's free to play. Um, but I think with games that people normally buy like Call of Duty and Battlefield. I mean, Call of Duty much so more because it sells a lot more. But I think that with the... There's definitely a market share between players who currently play Fortnite because Call of Duty doesn't have Battle Royale. And um, now that Call of Duty has one and it's already a game they're going to buy, do you see any sort of shift between what these publishers are going to do or are they just going to kind of stick their ground and hope that they stay... Uh, unique enough from Call of Duty. I think at the current moment, Fortnite can definitely just sit still, kind of keep doing what they're doing, you know, release their like bi-weekly or whatever events that they do and survive well enough, I think, using their in-game market. What do you guys think about, how about the future, or Tristan, were you going to say something? I was going to say I agree. I think Fortnite's kind of like update and gameplay patch models fairly unique. They have like the whole systems thing, or not systems, seasons thing, where they update the map every season instead of making new maps. Um, and they have like the challenges and the battle pass and all that. So I don't think they need to do anything. Plus they're not going to go like pay to play, right? So I, I don't see any reason for them to kind of worry about call of duty or because call of duty is completely different 
or it, it's closer to Fortnite than Battlefield is, but it's still fairly different that I don't see many people like jumping over. What do you see in terms of the future of Battle Royale games in terms of developers? Do you think that, I mean, PUBG kind of came out of the blue after, uh, what is it, like DayZ and things like, or H1Z1, and those were sort of smaller developers. I mean, obviously PUBG Corp now is huge, um, but do you think that with the coming of the AAA publishers that sort of these smaller studios that want to make uh, Battle Royales, their window has kind of closed Oh, yeah. And I, I would say even before the AAAs were getting in, I think that window was basically already shut in terms of being able to make a new and different enough uh, battle royale that people will actually stay and play it. And I think things like Realm Royale just kind of shows that. What about, what is it called? Radical Heights. Hi- Radical Heights. Yeah. That... Do you think Lawbreakers <laughs> is going to come back with the battle royale mode? <laughs> I'm just, just gonna let, let just that let motorcycle. It lie. Just let it lie. Mm-hmm. I think today's the last day their servers are up. Today's the last day we can talk about lawbreakers. Mm-hmm. It'll be collectively erased from our memories. All right, and that wraps it up for most of the battle royale segment. We have one last thing, and that's oh, what what am I getting in my ear? T- Twitter correspondent Tristan Jung. He has something to, to say about Battle Royales. Tristan. Hello. It's Tristan Jung, Twitter correspondent Tristan Jung. We asked our followers, we're roughly 75% of the way through the year of Battle Royale. Which Battle Royale are you still playing or looking forward to? Um, and 42% said Blackout. Followed closely by 31% saying Fortnite then 17% saying PUBG, and then 10% saying Battlefield V Firestorm. What do you guys think? I think those results... Uh, definitely, I, if you had to give me those four, I would guess that exact order. So we obviously just saw Blackout gameplay, and it's it's the news of the hour. Right. People um, are getting to touch the game mode, and they're getting to right. see how it plays. So I think that helped boost uh, Black Ops' vote a bit. And, yeah, it makes sense that Firestorm is on the bottom. Because while they showed us, I guess, sort of gameplay of it, there's still very little known about it. Yeah, and then obviously the order of Fortnite above PUBG, just Fortnite being the bigger game. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Surprisingly, from the replies, it was heavily weighted towards Blackout. We've had at Capacitor Plate say Blackout for the win. At Dying Meme saying, uh, Blackout looks great. Firm handshakes to the team over at Treyarch. They made a great BR game, but unfortunately, I'll, I think I'll pass on Black Ops. Uh, I guess that means he likes Black Ops, but he won't buy it. Um, and then our regular at Calvin Colton 6 said, Blackout is what PUBG should have been. I felt PUBG was really greedy. Um, so there's some love for Black hmm. Ops there. Then, uh, we have, at Danston name, say Battlefield V is going to flop so hard, I'm only looking forward to the BR. Oof. I want to say, what do you guys think about Call of Duty selling a standalone blackout for $20? I think that would sell. Yeah. I think that would sell like ah. crazy. Very easily. And then they just put a battle pass or whatever on top of it. Ooh, yeah. You're just raking in that cash, Blizzard. You can't do battle pass. Or I guess you could. Because I'm, I'm sure Activision pick. would want to uh, sell new versions of Black Ops every year. Mm, or or Blackout. All, all these names are just merging together. Yeah, it's, it's, it gets, it's getting rough. Fire out night battlegrounds. Um, but then we had we had one hero in the crowd. At Orem4899694 said uh he he basically quoted the ea conference uh we're adding a new mode to the game that we know you all wanted (laughs) royale and then there's like a boo (laughs) and then he followed up by saying no battle royale for me thank you i guess that should have been an option that should have been an option yeah Mm -hmm. a no no royale but yeah that that's uh that's what the people had to say back to you guys at the studio all right, see you, Tristan. All right. 
We are moving on to a subject that I don't want to spend too much time talking about because we talk about it too much, but we've had some developments on the controversial loot boxes, um, and it came out. I'll give a quick recap. So, um, essentially, Belgian the Belgian government opened a criminal investigation into EA regarding their gambling practices, or I guess predatory practices. I don't know how to phrase it. Essentially, that loot boxes are bad for people with gambling problems and that they're not regulated in any sense. And then EA shot back and said, hey, we don't care what you think of it. We're still going to sell these things here. And then um, a giant coalition of countries and some states in the U.S. essentially said, hey, we need to look into loot boxes as gambling again. This is a serious problem. We need to look into it. And then an Australian investigation published an article um, essentially linking loot boxes to being detrimental towards those with gambling behavior. So, with that said, um, I don't know where to start. Do you guys have any? I talked just a lot of, on the recap. So, for you guys, what sort of regulation would you like to see in terms of loot boxes? And I just have a couple examples. So, there's obviously uh, the Iron Fist is a complete ban, no loot boxes. Um, there is the, I guess the route that I think China does is where you need to show drop chances mm-hmm. yep. so people can see exactly like what the chances of getting something is. And then, uh, some other parties have suggested somehow implementing like age restrictions just so, um, I mean, obviously it's not good for people with gambling additions, but I guess the most vulnerable group is, are those that are underage and minors. Um, and getting addicted to this sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I, I personally think the drop chances is pretty good. Um, but I think an age limitation is also something that should probably be implemented. Because a kid is going to see, oh, 0.1015%. Whatever. Let's right. go for it. So an interesting thing that Azure Lane does is it not only lists the percentages of what you have to get certain rarities of ships... If you're underage, it also only lets you spend so much money on gems per month. So that could how be a does, possible how does it How does it do age? Do When you register, do you just put in your age? Yeah, you have to link it to an account. And if you're... Unless you lie, I guess you could do that. But if you're a good Samaritan, you will... You'll get caught by the age gate. And you can only spend so much of mom's credit card per month. I think I said this before, but I, I just, I'm totally okay with people getting rid of loot boxes and just put all that crap in the cosmetic store, like make the rare thing cost 20 bucks and, and whoever wants to buy it can buy it. I, I'm totally fine with that. I, I don't like loot boxes. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously you would like that, but if it's EA and they can get a, an item that has a 1% drop chance, and you need to buy fifteen five dollar loot boxes to get uh-huh. really lucky and get it, or buy it for twenty dollars. They make like what seventy five bucks if you have to buy fifteen boxes. Or you can just make it the exact. I mean, if you're gonna put the chances of it anyways, you can just make it like divide it by the chance and make that the price. That's true. You could. That's actually an interesting solution. I like that. But that works for cosmetics. What about when it's a natural gameplay mechanic? that you're unlocking through these loot boxes. Wait, what? What What game does that? Well, I, I, I'm I trying to think of, like, any card game, basically. I'm sure it's happened in the past. Hmm. Hmm. Like an, like an artifact or something. Yeah. Like, what's to... Pr- if you just say, I'll just buy it with an amount of money. Uh-huh. They control the market, so they'd be able to make good cards really expensive. You know, I you know, I don't know. How do we do this? Can't, cancel video games. Cancel yep. video games. Viewport team defeated. Can't do it. <laughs> Loot boxes. And I just want to go into what Tristan said. It was actually leading into my next question. And if let's say everyone everyone in the world unites against loot boxes for whatever reason and and they're banned tomorrow. And EA's like, uh oh, we need to make money. Otherwise we're gonna lose business. Which where do you think us as an industry would move towards in terms because i mean they got to make that money somehow i mean you might not like loot boxes but we've gone away from free to play pay to win games because that used to in the mid 2000s that's how they made money they you pay for power right and loot boxes were the alternative 
Um, but one thing I had was what if they bumped the cost of a game of AAA games up to $70 because they make less money from microtransactions? Would you guys be fine with no loot boxes, but $70 games? You're not thinking crazy enough. You got like here. What if to play Call of Duty online, you have to buy a time pass that lasts like 20, 20 hours, oh right? Or like a hundred hours and got to buy that every time yeah. it runs out. Your no, home you, becomes an arcade, basically. You're just throwing quarters into that machine. Going back, going back to the past. Mm -hmm. What if I, how about even crazier? Uh, what if there's a queue to play a multiplayer game <laughs> and it's like an amusement park where you have to buy a fast pass if you want to uh -huh. skip the line. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you got to wait for two hours to play. What about uh, ads on loading screens? Unskippable. Some games already have those. But it's for more for like stuff within the game itself, not like outside stuff. Mm -hmm. What about ads in the video game? You know what? Like, uh, Battlefield 2142 actually did that. The billboards would be ads for like Intel and stuff. Hmm. All right, I'm, let's Oh, you want to you want to close us off on loot boxes? No, it's it's all good. <laughs> Are you going to say something dumb? Yeah, I was going to say something dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh we got a really quick headline here. I'm not sure how much you guys are going to talk about, but THQ Nordic grabbing more properties. We had time splitters on the episode that we did last time, and now we have Kingdoms of Amalur. Uh, that f I, I, I was about to say franchise, but it was only one game. Mm -hmm. um, I just have some really quick questions. How many of you actually remember this game? Oh, I definitely remember it. Did you play it? I did not play it, though. Tristan, what about you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I, I, know, I was gonna make a Kingdom Hearts joke, and I was like, "Well, that's not gonna take off." So, no, I have not played this game. I have not even heard of this game. Oh, this, really? I'm sorry. Yeah. Wasn't this paid for by? Uh, it was like Studio Kurt, Thirty Eight or something. Kurt, it was Kurt yeah. Schilling. Kurt yeah. Schilling, and mm -hmm. went bankrupt like immediately. Nice. Yeah. To be honest, um, though, I'm pretty excited for this announcement because I do like that kind of action RPG style game. So. I'm curious to see what they'll do with it. If they'll make another action RPG or if they're going to make a card game based off it. Who knows? So I saw this announcement and I re-downloaded the game mm -hmm. off Origin. And I picked up where I left off and I played for about... I, I had I had, I think I had like 30 hours in the game. Mm -hmm. But uh, like beforehand when I played it years ago. And I played for like one hour and I was like... This is exactly why I quit this game, because it's kind of boring. Is it grindy boring, or is it just, like, combat boring? Combat's... I, I Maybe just the class I played, the combat's kind of boring. I played on the hardest difficulty, and the combat's kind of boring. And then the side quests are all, like, fetch quests. How do you have difficulty in a, in a game like that? Make like, monsters have more, more HP. You make monsters have more... It's like... It's like... How can I, like... Uh, yeah, lay it on me. It's like Torchlight, but you control the character in third person. Oh, it's that kind of MMO. Wait, is it an MMO? It's no, a single it's player a, game. just an action RPG. Oh, it's a single sorry. player MMO, pretty much, is what I like to think of it as. Okay, yeah. understood. Understood, because it said including the never made MMO project, so I just assumed that game was oh, also an that MMO. That game would have actually been better as an MMO, I think. But Okay, probably. Um, the other question I had, which is probably the more important question, is... Uh, what do you guys think of THQ Nordic sort of acquiring all these older properties? Are you, do you expect them to like make a lot of these games or are they just sort of hoarding these and then just opening up their options for games that their studios could make? Uh, I think a little bit of both. I imagine they hope to make something out of the IP. Uh, maybe it's just a cook media buy storm, but I'm hoping to see these time splitters come back. Can you imagine? Time splitters, gotcha game, gotcha game on your phone. Battle Cross Royale. Battle Royale. Um, side note: Was Darksiders was that a franchise that THQ Nordic bought as soon as they reestablished, or did that come from the THQ like? Because I remember when THQ went out of business, they essentially sold all their properties off. Yeah, but not everything got bought. Yep. 
So was Darksiders something that no one bought, or did they? No, I think Darksiders was the that? first one. They it says acquire the THQ name as well as Darksiders, Red Faction, yeah. and other mm-hmm. properties. Okay, okay. So they got like their close to home properties they, right. that they didn't. Okay. Because I was gonna say like, was that the first one that they bought and actually still made a game out of? Mm. But yeah, maybe maybe they're just like you know slowly buying all their stuff back. Mm-hmm. The the slow <laughs> rebuild. The slow rebuild. And then they'll go bankrupt again. And then they'll make a new company. And THQ, then they'll buy all the- Amazon, THQ Jungle, I don't know. I like it, THQ Jungle. Are you just thinking like Nordic and then Jungle? Is that how you got that? Yeah, it's kind of, kind of the opposite. And then you said Amazon and wait, you're like, wait, that's an actual company? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, Last story. Let's just hit on this quick. We're running kind of long. We've got Bethesda coming out telling us that Fallout 76 will outlast us all. Just, just, what is, what, what's going on, guys? What is Todd Howard doing over there? I don't know what they're attempting to say by this. If we're supposed to believe they're never going to make another Fallout title again and just add more and more content to this game, or if they're just being cheeky and uh, just saying something really dumb, but... How do you think Fallout would work with, like, I, I, this is the closest I can understand, but, like, the MMO treatment, right? Let's say this game goes on for 10. For, well, for, I mean, they did say this game has zones, so I guess you could just keep adding zones and eventually you'd have the full nuked US, but. But, I mean, does a bigger map, I mean, I haven't played the game, but I don't think a bigger map would really suit this game, right? No, I would heavily vote against it. Or are you saying, uh, like, different whole new maps entirely, sort of like PUBG style? Uh, either or. Probably key places you'd want to do, rather than just a random barren middle Midwest or something. Oh, you don't want Central America, which is, like, 80% empty? Mm-hmm. And can just walk through that forever. How yeah. about space? Oh, oh my God! Is it all so tying let's, into there? Let's just not go there. Let's their just next not title, go there. spacecraft, whatever it's called, space. Starbound, Starfield, Starbound, Starfield. Oh, Starbound's another game. That's right. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard, hard remo- remembering all these space games. You build a time machine and go go to Skyrim. Mm-hmm. Is it is it just weird? Is it weird that this game comes out in two months and we haven't seen very much of it? Weren't they supposed to have a beta? I think the, it's next month. The beta begins in October. Okay. I don't uh, know, I'm pretty excited. I highly doubt it'll run forever, though. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously that's hyperbole, but do you guys... They no, say that... he said it. They, I'm not being they, they ironic. Said, they, they said that they're like, oh, all of our games have like still thousands of players years on. I, I don't know about this one, because, I mean... I don't know how moddable this game will be, right? Like, that's sort of the big staple of their other games, is that uh-huh. they're very moddable. Uh-huh. And that, first of all, you don't need, fr- I mean, you can play this game alone, but I feel like this game's more from friends. It can be 15 years down the line and you can go play Oblivion, right? But 10 years net from now, you're going to tell all your friends, hey guys, let's boot up Fallout 76. It's like, probably not. So, I don't know. I, I think, they're a little, I mean, obviously probably two to three years this game will get support, but five years plus, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if Bethesda has the resources to just devote a development team all the time to just creating content for the foreseeable future. What about if they just repackage mods and sell them as content for this game from user created <laughs> content? Mm, there we go. Paid mods again. That'll work out well. Yeah. I mean, or Val- the fourth time. Valve mm-hmm. said it themselves, remember, in some of their keynotes back in the early Steam Dev days where they're like, we don't have a lot of people working at Valve, so we made the most genius idea ever. We just have our fans create our content for us. And obviously, it's not like mischievous. Obviously, the content mm-hmm. creators for Valve make a lot of money if, um, if their item sells, but I don't know. I'm Todd still holding Howard. on to the, the guess that Starfield and ES6 is fallout 76 what <laughs> it's just one game this is one game okay it's just it's just add-ons to fallout 76 every every valve property or not every bethesda property will just yeah. be linked to this so but, like there'll be a doom dlc where hell yeah doom World is connected hell yeah 
Bethesda software cinematic universe or gaming universe. I, I like it. Mm-hmm. I like it. And then they there's a new Bethesda di- universe. Dishonored expansion for this. Yep. Why not? Let's do it. It'll be like here. It'll be. What if? What if? Like Heroes of the Storm. There was a MOBA game for the Bethesda universe. Slash id. We'll put id in there. I mean, I guess you could do it. I don't know how many heroes there'd end up being, but you have some material to work with. You got Wait, what? A lot MOBA of... game? In 2018? Yeah. Battle Royale, come on. Battle what Royale if, mode. What if Imperial Guard, his ultimate, is he makes you stop because you violated the law? It, the the camera then, goes from a top down yeah. view to like first person and then like yeah. zooms in on his face and, and you have to pay the court fine yeah or or you serve your sentence you're just in jail the rest of the game i like that you yep. know that wraps it up for episode 11 of viewport relay uh viewport relay is available on radio public itunes google music stitcher podbean and all of your favorite podcast directories if you enjoyed this episode which i hope you did Please take a moment to subscribe, review, and share it with your friends. We're also on social media as Viewport Gaming on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So if you guys saw that Twitter correspondent Tristan Jung segment, if you follow us on Twitter, you might show up in the next episode. I'll be waiting. Oh, oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> Trist- he's, he's, he's just on his computer. Just looking waiting. At Twitter. He's, he's waiting. Um, but Tristan, why Viewport right. Gaming? Viewport Relay is part of Viewport Gaming, a website that provides a look into video games through reviews, features, and podcasts. You can find all of Viewport content at viewportgaming.com. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, as always, guys, and gals, and, and you know, not, I didn't, I, and I, want, I didn't want to be gender. I was like, you know, some people don't identify as guys or gals. And dogs and cats. That. Yeah. All listeners. All listeners. What if they're deaf, Alex? Okay. What oh, if they're li- boy. What if they're closed oh, captioning this? What if do they're we, closed captioning us? Do, do we have that speech to Braille? <laughs> All right. As always, I've been your host, Albert, and I've been joined by my co host, Tristan Jung. See ya. And Alex Nestor. Please look forward to the Azure Lane anime and video game. Oh, my gosh. No plugs here. Uh, got it in. Ugh, we'll see you next time. Royale. See ya.